Hi, it's Tiana, and I haven't done an unboxing video in a while. So let's see what's inside. And let's hope I don't end up in the ER because I am clumsy. Usually every year I end up in the ER. I haven't ended up in the ER yet for 2020. So that's a good thing. What did they use? Oh my God, super glue? Jeez Louise. There we go. Let's hope to God this thing didn't arrive broken. Ooh, free newspaper. I love this. Let's see. What's in the headlines today? Is that a garage sale? Ooh, I want to go. What state is this in? Kewanee, Illinois. Ah, sorry, can't make it. Oh, damn. All right, so I'm going to cut the bubble wrap, and you're going to see the unveiling of something I've been waiting for and um, actually been excited about receiving. Oh, no. More tape. All right, you know what? Camera going down a moment. Hold on. Right, I'm so excited. So this is the one that arrived. And here's another 1930s, 1920s perfume bottle that I have in my collection that's a similar color. I actually love this color. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's show you what I got. All right, so what this is, is a 1920s, 1930s perfume bottle, and it's a dripper. Now, generally, a lot of them come with the atomizer bulb, which is like this. And it's attached to a little metal collar on the top. And then when you when you squeeze this, the perfume comes out. But uh, this one is a different, whole different animal. This is known as a dripper. And a dripper actually has a dauber inside. Let me pull it out gently and show you. And this one has a really, really long dauber. It's uh, quite pretty. Look at that glass. It smells, oh my goodness, I just took the dauber out and it, I could smell the perfume. Back then, they used to use really, really, very, very musky, strong perfume. It doesn't smell as good as today, let me tell you that one. The top is pretty cool, look at that. It has um, sparkles inside with like hand-blown glass in the center and metal going around the rim. I don't know if you could see that, look at that. How pretty is that? See how that shimmers? And this was made by Pyramid. And you don't see too many of these brand uh, bottles. You don't see too many Pyramid. You see a lot of Devilbus, but Pyramid is not as common. And if you look on the collar, it says Pyramid. And oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. You see that gold work? That's called gold rotting. And I suspect that this was made by Moser in Czechoslovakia. And I'll show you, this one is a Moser bottle. Actually, let me put the dauber back in before a disaster happens. And uh, so this one is a orthoplastic freeze. That's the design. And it has that rotted glass or rotting, as they call it. And uh, this one is a uh, Moser made in Czechoslovakia. And I suspect, because I do know that Pyramid and Zavilbis and other perfume makers at the time did get a lot of their glass imported from Czechoslovakia. So my guess is this is a Czech made glass. Look at that. Look at the gold guild going up the bottle. Too bad it's worn in a couple of spots, but that's not such a big deal. I'll show you. And look how iridescent this glass is. You see that? Look at the beauty of that. And iridescence is different colors going through glass. So when you have iridescent glass, you'll see different colors shimmer throughout the piece. And this is really, really, really something else. Oh my goodness, guys, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now I'm gonna do a cutaway in a moment, showing you information about the history of this glass company. Well, it, actually it wasn't a glass company, it was a perfume company that other companies made the glass for it. 
including American companies, European companies. And uh, I mean, beautiful, absolutely stunning. I was so glad to add this to my collection. And I afterthought, I just wanted to show you something really cool about the purchase of this. Hang on one second while I go get it. Check this out, guys. Oh my goodness, I got so lucky. So the seller originally listed it for $150, right? And I was watching it and nobody bid on it and it didn't sell. And I could not afford $150. There's no way in hell. And I wouldn't spend $150 on a perfume bottle um, unless I uh, pretty much saved up my money for like a year. <laughs> and uh, actually, my husband would write divorce papers out straight away if I spent $150 on a perfume bottle. So I watched it. Nobody bid. It ended. The seller relisted it. And the next time around, it had a make an offer button. So I... I know this is a lowball offer and a lot of you sellers out there hate people like me, but I figured the old saying, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? So I made an offer of 45 bucks and two days went by and I said, oh, this guy is probably totally, totally ignoring me. He thinks I'm a real, um, like low life. <laughs> he thinks I'm a loser. And so he's ignoring my offer, which I could understand. I would ignore my offer too. With that, Two days later, I get a notice. It says, pay now. And I was like, what? He accepted my offer for 45 bucks for this perfume bottle. Can you believe it? So yay, <laughs> I got really lucky. So uh, now I'm going to do a cutaway. I'm going to show you more information about Pyramid perfume bottles. And stay tuned and check it out. So I found this really great blog on the internet. And it's called Collecting Vintage Perfume Atomizers. It's fantastic for when you need more information about antique and art deco perfume bottles. So let me tell you a little something about the Pyramid Company. The Pyramid Company was a subsidiary of the Samuel Langsdorf Company of New York. They were manufacturers of celluloid products and postcards during the early 1900s. They imported bottles from Czechoslovakia, and like De Vilbis, they added their own hardware. And here's one of their logos. Bottles were often marked with a pyramid-shaped paper or label affixed to the top of the foot of the bottle, a hang tag, or the name Pyramid stamped on the collar. Many times, Pyramid, Volupte, Grande, Aristo, and De Vilbis bottles will have the same types of decoration and or bottles and hardware. The blog writer suspects this is because they both purchased Czechoslovakian or American bottles for their own hardware. Pyramid bottles were internally enameled. I wonder also if Volupte, Aristo, Garande, and Pyramid were handled or put together and decorated by some of the same people and then shipped off to the various companies to have their labels or hang tags affixed and distributed, quote unquote. So here's one of the paper labels that were affixed to a perfume bottle that's still intact. Here's what some of the atomizers looked like. The bottles often had a very elaborate decoration, gold incrustation, and was popular, a popular element as well as hand-painted abstract or floral shapes in contrasting colors. The Art Deco styles of these atomizers proved to be just as collectible as those made by De Vilbis, Aristo, and Volupte. So here's a 1929 ad. $12.50. That was a, a lot of money back then. It is interesting to note that in this blog writer's research of this company, she's come across several celluloid dresser sets which were sold under the pyramid label by the S. Langsdorf Company. One of the dresser sets was in a patterned celluloid imitating tortoiseshell aptly named Shell Tone and was decorated in 22 karat gold trim 
Another one was decorated with rhinestones. And here's an old 1931 pyramid ad. Look how beautiful these bottles were. And there are some of the prices. It's hard to make out. But the uh, first one was $6.20. The second one was $3. The third one was $5.60. The fourth one was $3.40. And the last one was $6.70. All back in 1931. And here's another ad for the company. And another one. And that's all. So I hope you enjoyed my video today. And have a great day. And I'll see you guys all soon.